Hey, I'm Brian Woods, and this is the third episode of the Content Cube. Uh, Zach is not here. He went home from sp for spring break. He decided on his priorities. Uh, I am here with Jake, though, and uh, my girlfriend, Madison. Hi. Hi. How you doing, guys? Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, you don't need to apologize. What are you apologizing <laughs> I'm for? Sorry. I'm sorry. Woo, okay. Let's keep it rolling. Uh, it's um twelve twenty six uh, Friday. We're recording this early. Uh, early. Late. Early. We're banking something. this one because we want to put something up over spring break. Uh, we just saw us, so we're going to be talking about that later in the show. But we're going to start with uh, Google Stadia and that whole keynote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, very exciting stuff. That was Wednesday, correct? Yesterday. No, Life's yesterday or Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. It was Tuesday because I watched it before yeah. we recorded Tuesday it afternoon, that. Google announced their, uh, officially announced their video game streaming service, Stadia. Plural for Stadia. <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah, apparently. It's like, that's what Stadia is. It's supposed to be like, that's why their whole promo is like everyone entering. It looks like they're entering a stadium from like, it's like a, it looks like a racetrack and then like a, I don't know, like a cave. It's kind of bizarre. So they, this seems to be like a, this seems to be like a branch of YouTube almost. It, yeah, it seems like it's trying to integrate YouTube, uh, kind of what Twitch does, and like a Steam all together at once. Yeah, like it's very ambitious. Um, I hope they don't abandon it in two years when it's not an instant success. Uh, just like all their other projects. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Google Circles. What is um, Google Circles? Google Allo. Google Plus, bro, join my circle. Oh, okay. Your social team. media network. <laughs> Google um, Glass. Google Glass, rest in peace. Uh, Google Allo, one of their uh, at least 14 uh, bastard messaging apps. Okay. Uh, recently canceled, rest in peace. Uh, so this seems very uh, ambitious. Like, yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, Jason Schreier did an interview with... Uh, who's the dude? Phil Harrison? Is that his name? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, the, who, who's heading this project. And they, he asked him, like, a lot of your other products have gone by the wayside and you've given up on it. And he said, <laughs> this is not something we're giving up on. And the reason I will believe them, one, Phil Harrison, ex Xbox executive, yeah. he obviously cares. They got on... What's the girl who's heading their first party division? Oh God, I was pretty stoked about this. I think I wrote a note. Um... Yeah, she had was the she founded uh, whoever's doing I think it's Division that developing studio. She uh, founded she's Ubisoft. Yeah, yeah, she did Assassin's Creed and she did one other franchise. And it seems like they are one they've already put in the effort to get all this started. But they have people yeah. there who actually care about gaming. And I don't. It also seems like everyone else in the industry is also shifting this way. Yeah. So I don't see them giving up on it. Yeah. No, Though I don't think it's ready. Dude, like the United States infrastructure, <laughs> uh, ISP, this, the data infrastructure of our uh, country is not really ready for this. You know? Well, it said 25 megabits per second is what is needed to run at 1080p, 60 frames per second. But I'm pretty sure my Wi-Fi at home, even when connected to Ethernet, is like, I want to say 22. And I was listening to Kind of Funny's podcast, yeah. and Greg pulled up his speed in San Francisco. Yeah. It was like 17. Yeah, like one time, and, like I was using Ethernet here at the campus, and it fucked up, and it was like downloading stuff like 30. And that was crazy, but like that's <laughs> not a normal thing. Yeah. And I, I, I'm still chasing that high. <laughs> Yeah, I was reading previews, and it seems like everyone says Assassin's Creed runs fine, but yeah. that game kind of chugs in general, and then when they played Doom, it was noticeable. Like, Not game-breaking, but noticeable. Like, I heard good things about their Project Stream last year with Assassin's Creed yeah. Odyssey, and apparently that worked, and this is just an extension. This is the continuation yeah. of that. Uh, I'm going to buy... Man, you flip over the controller, you see the Konami code. I'm like, oh, these are gamers. <laughs> Apparently, it's, it's not on the actual controller. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I I heard, I read a thing today, like, it feels good, and it feels like a good controller, which is great. It looks like the off-brand Nintendo Pro controller. Yeah. In that... Like, apparently it doesn't feel cheap, so that's all that matters. But it looks, it doesn't look great. The craziest thing for me about that is that it doesn't have, like, a clip to, like, put your phone in. 
Yeah. Like, they, like so they made like such a big deal about like phones and stuff. Yeah, oh, that is true. And then oh, like yeah. those controllers exist. Like I almost bought one for some godforsaken reason recently. <laughs> they'll they'll be third party things. I'm sure, but like this is like their official it's controller. True. And you see this dude like walking across the line of There's... all the devices and like He played on each one for like four seconds. Dude, <laughs> like what are you doing? When when he went from the uh, when he grabbed the controller and went from the computer to the TV, I'm like, oh, this is all bullshit. There's no way to sync. <laughs> you can't just sync a controller to yeah. things. And they're like, oh, it's over Wi-Fi. There you and go. that was I'm like, well, that's crazy. Yeah. Like I'm convinced they have the technology. I just don't think uh, we as a society do. Yeah. And like, it's I will be shocked to see if this is wide reaching in a year. Because they're it's a, it's coming out this year regardless of whatever state it's in. They said okay. 2019, so mm. summer is when they're announcing. They said more information, which I assume will include price, like the actual structure of how this works, whether you're downloading an app or paying for a streaming service. Or I, they said they said something about a store. Like, I they said something about an online store, so I assume like I that was my original assumption, but then that doesn't make sense because they touted this whole oh you watch a YouTube video for. Assassin's Creed yeah. play now no one wants to do that if you have to I mean yes you can have your credit card hooked up yeah. but it's good I mean yes that's their goal is to get all this money for people to play $60 immediately charged but I assume every game is going to have like an hour demo like every oh. game on the service is going to have like an hour demo and then you can okay yeah. that and makes I, sense I assume they would have like because basically like I feel like everyone's biggest fear here is like oh I'm going to uh, spend like $120 on games here. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like I spent uh, $300 on Aloe stickers yeah. and then it's going to get shut down. What do I do with them? Like, and like you don't have a download somewhere. You don't have a physical disc. Like, yeah, I it's mean, gone. It's in the cloud. It is. I mean, that's one. AKA concern. someone else's computer. <laughs> you don't, we are slowly getting away from that. You're not going to have any ownership yeah. over most of your gaming stuff. So yeah. And like a game, like, I think about it, like think of a game that's like they made like first party like they have Jade Raymond I, I remember yeah. her name there you Jade go. Raymond's leading Jade their Raymond. first party studio and once out once Stadia is gone like that game is like yeah you no one can play it like it's unarchivable because like it's not a download mm-hmm. it's not on anyone's servers but Google's yeah you know it, like I, I was, can buy yeah. a copy of Paragon I'm scared that is true <laughs> you're scared yeah I'm scared why. Keep going. I'm scared. I'm I'm listening. Well, like I was talking to my brother about this. If Sony plays their cards right, they could hold the monopoly over the console industry you mean because Google? no Sony, Sony okay. because if Google goes into strong, Google's not doing a console. Yeah, their their thing is full streaming. Xbox is next generation going to try to put their feet in both water and do mm-hmm. a console and a streaming or thing. X-Stream. Yeah, I don't know what their official name is. I'm yeah. sure we'll hear stuff. I think that's like the project. But like, if they try to put too many marbles in the streaming side and yeah. don't put all their effort into console, Sony can win the console war pretty easily, and they're going to be the only ones making a high end like that. Everyone is involved in the. I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, what do you call it when you're in the in the group? Like already, they try to get you in the. In, uh, the click. No, like, the, I, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. In the, there's a word like they get you, you get your friend in the door, and you have joined the. <laughs> it's like this is like a. You're mini- talking about like the Apple, like yeah, you know, like I'm you in know, the I'm Apple like, store, like mm. all. The- I'm in the. I know <laughs> this is gonna bug me for the rest of the show. What? Yeah, yes, like basically they get you in the brand. Yeah. You are in the brand, and you care about like it. You're in this network. Yeah, you know? Sony can get you in the hardware network, and the other two are fighting between streaming. And if Sony doesn't, I think Sony will. Like, try a little streaming, but I think they're going to stay committed to the discs. Microsoft seems to be stepping away from, like, not stepping away from their console. I think they're still going to make one, but, like, they seem to care less about exclusive stuff now. I mean, they bought all those studios. They, no, I, I mean, they're going to have, like, but, like, I was watching that uh, Nindies. Oh, uh, and, the, and Nintendo, those, the Nintendo people were like, uh, thanks to our, thanks to our friends at Microsoft for letting this happen. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see how this whole console generation turns out, especially because, um, especially because 
they we don't know how any of this is turning out. So Xbox will presumably release their information this summer yeah. at E3, and then Sony is February. Yeah, and by then Stadia will be out before either of their two things are yeah. out. So I don't know what Xbox is going to do to. So I'll ask you about this now. What do you feel about the what I think are kind of gimmicky things to Stadia? So like the the YouTube watch the end of the video yeah. buy it join. What do you think about joining streamers in their game or watching walkthroughs while you're playing? I think that stuff is fine. I don't know how the walkthrough thing's gonna work. Like, <laughs> is are they gonna like basically like have a video made just because everyone playing this game is a video or? That would actually be cool if, like, they own the video that I've been playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then they can just play that. Because I don't want to be like, uh, Google Alexa, whatever your name is, uh, show me how to beat this level. And then I got like, hey, what up, guys? It's B-Boy here. And then <laughs> I don't want someone talking to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think the weirdest thing that they have that I cannot think of a real purpose for uh, is to, like, send a link. And it's basically like that save state. I don't get that. And maybe that's because I am, like, we are all invested in a lot of gaming. Yeah. But I can see people who don't play a lot. Like, for example, my roommate mainly plays Call of Duty. Yeah. But, like, you see this cool moment in your game, like, eh, I want to try that. But still, who wants to jump in the middle of a game? Well, like... Like, that's weird to me. The only instance I can truly think of where this is super useful. Like, they were pitching and it was like, oh, like, you beat my... Can you do this faster than me? But, <laughs> whatever. But, Maddie, you may be able to speak to this. Like, let's say you're watching someone, a streamer, play a game for, like, a long time, right? Yeah. And then, uh, you're like, oh, I want this game. You would probably just click the buy now button somewhere on their stream, right? Because I assume that's just built in at that point. Yeah. And then you would have the option of just starting where they left off. Like, would that interest you at all? Um, me? No. No? But I can see it. Uh, I can see someone going like, man, he can't beat this boss? Okay. Yeah. I got it. You know? And then yeah. they jump in. Yeah. For some reason, the game that always pops in my mind, because I read this before the actual conference that this was a report, and yeah. I was like, it's kind of bizarre, but I wonder if it actually happened. And it did. The game that always runs in my mind is like Dark Souls yeah. or Bloodborne. But you're going to get absolutely fucked if you yeah. hop in halfway through the game you know, and you don't know latency, what you're doing. Any amount of latency yeah. is just going to... There is... I, I will be shocked. I don't know. And maybe I'm just being be negative but yeah. i can't see this working all like really well to the point where it is used across the country and i have a question yeah. about being able to pop you were asleep for half of this con for half <laughs> yeah <you> know. yeah <laughs> understandable they got they got quite techy yeah. no but being able to pop into the middle of it yeah. like do you have their save yeah yeah because basically their save everything about the game is stored in the cloud, a.k.a. someone else's computer. Uh, and then they'd basically just be sending you that save state. You know what I mean? Not sending it. They'd be beaming it to you. I just don't see the appeal in it. I, yeah. Well, like... I'm like, trying to think of you... games that would be good examples. Okay, I, I'm watching Matt Pat or, or Mr. PewDiePie play The Walking Dead, right? And I am like, okay, like, this is a cool game, but I don't want to see the first, like, half of this episode mm. so maybe that is an instance where you would want to just have that same yeah. file and start off exactly where they left off you know what i mean yeah and then I get, you're, you're yeah. not missing anything like i mean like gameplay wise like it's the walking dead <laughs> bad example telltale's gone um <laughs> i i mean i guess in that example that makes sense like oh i watch an hour of my favorite youtuber play this game yeah. i actually this looks really interesting i prefer to not waste my time playing the hour i've already watched and yeah. basically already experienced like i mean like resident evil yeah. different horror games you might not want to like oh, i already watched yeah. this i don't need to do it again maybe and you know what I wouldn't use it, but I guess having that feature would still be pretty nice. I don't know. That the things that do interest me, I think the if the walkthrough thing somehow functions is really cool. Yeah. To not have to go on my like I like I literally can't figure out this puzzle. Google Assistant, how do I do this? In ten seconds I have the video for me. Like I think the video thing is totally gonna work because everyone playing on this service is just playing a video that they're already actually they, I don't remember if you guys remember this, they're like Oh, like simultaneously, we are streaming oh, this yeah. video to YouTube as well. well. So they already have a billion like machine yeah. learning AI looking at every part of this game. 
I saw a thing on, I don't know if it was Twitter or if someone had said this, it was that basically like Google makes most of their money from ad revenue and they're yeah. basically, they basically created this to just absorb more data from people and make money. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Like all these, everyone's going to have, they're going to know literally everything you did in the game. What about the YouTubers that like make their money on uh, doing walkthroughs? Like, do you think this is going to... I mean, it technically doesn't, from the way they showed it, it doesn't take away from those people. Yeah. It looks like they are, so like Google Assistant, I'm stuck on this puzzle. They can see your screen, then they like give you basically a YouTube video, not from another person who's playing, but from someone who's like those established walkthrough people. Yeah. That's what would pop up. So technically, yes, it would take away because I don't know who... That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Who's doing... Oh, there's a few. Like yeah. I used to watch them. Like yeah. uh different games they make their channels solely on walkthroughs i appreciate those people that don't have commentary so it just makes me think like if google makes it so it you uh automatically see a walkthrough yeah you're not gonna look for someone else's yeah I'm, yeah so I'm, is it gonna hurt their channel i'm sure those at some extent but it really comes down to how many people are using this Okay, yeah. Like, I don't know that feature's not on PS4 or Xbox, you know? Yeah. yeah. The other feature that appears appeals to me, surprisingly, is the, like, join the streamer. I don't yeah. watch streamers play because I enjoy playing games. Yeah. And I find the idea of, because occasionally streamers would do, hey, I'm playing at 12 o'clock tonight. Feel yeah. free to join me. But it's always so hard because you have to, then yeah. you're like, friend me, but then my friends are full. And then it's... Like, you're chatting on Discord while you're doing something else. And to me, that is very confusing. The fact that I could get on YouTube and be there like, hey, join in, like, waiting list. Five, four, three, two, one, and then I'm in. Yeah. If it's, it works. Is, it sounds like where they have, like, the built-in lobby system that'll work. Yeah. Like, all the stuff they said about, like, what is it? It's more powerful than, like, the PS4 Pro 10.7 teraflops compared to 7 on Xbox and 5 on PS4 Pro? No, because I think they said it's more than both combined. It's so I think... Be. Then it would be 4 and... Yeah. Seven. I, uh, 6 and... I actually wrote this down. 12? I don't know. It is, yes. The tera, the teraflops, they're flopping more teraflops. Uh, Stadia's at 10.7. Xbox X is... Six and PS4 Pro is 4.2. There you go. So intimidating. It is intimidating. Like, they they gotta say they did have some whip or dick out moments when they were like <laughs> they're like yeah the past generation PS4 and Xbox. <laughs> I was like that's that's a badass move. <laughs> also when your thing comes out and doesn't work. Yeah. Like, <laughs> them are big words. Uh, I'm personally very excited by this controller. I'll probably never get to use here. <laughs> uh, I got the Steam controller. <laughs> I I literally spent 10 minutes today looking at PS4 controllers wanting to buy a new one because I uh, I have pre-ordered Sekiro yeah. or Se Sekiro how apparently you're supposed to say it and I'm ready for my controller to break from anger yeah. so, I was, but, so like the idea of a controller is fun to me but I never buy them I believe I've bought a total of uh, 10 PS4 controllers damn uh, and not because <laughs> I break them uh, four of them well last year in the dorms we played a lot of Gang Beasts um, we played so much Game Beasts in the lobby, <laughs> I just decided to leave my shit out there. And uh, one day my PS4 and all the controllers were stolen. Uh, so then I bought all the controllers in a PS4 Pro. Damn, that sucks. It does suck. I still think about it to this day. Not really. So where was it stolen from? Uh, hatch, um, fifth floor lobby. Um, I'm coming for you. Um, That's I, horrible. And they don't live on campus anymore because I told campus IT and if this IP address pops up, get them. Oh. Uh, I went through all the pride. It's gone. Uh, I've, I've accepted my loss. And inside, inside that PS4, <laughs> Puyo Puyo Tetris, a game that only exists physically, uh, uh -huh. still got that keychain, though. That's um, funny. That does suck. And then um, uh, one of the PS4 controllers broke somehow, and then I bought that C3 20th anniversary one. Uh, so now I have five or six PS4 controllers. Whatever. I buy a lot of controllers. Uh, excited about this one. Like, yeah. this Stadia... It scares, it scares me, man. It does. Well, I like, mean, I totally, I've even talked about this. The most appealing thing to me is this basically, if it works, I mean, not eliminates the Switch because Nintendo yeah. exclusives are one of a kind and you can't ever take those for granted. But like mm -hmm. the fact that I could play on my phone yeah. or I can play on my computer or, and to some people that might not sound appealing, but the fact that I could like, oh, I'm visiting my grandparents' house for a week. 
I mean, all I need to have is some way to access Google Chrome yeah. and the controller, and I'm good. All I literally have to pack is my Google controller. Yeah. And that's that's kind of insane that I think if they stick with it, in five years we will be at that point. What? Uh, Go for what it. What if it just flops? Uh, like Google Allo and uh, Yeah, Google no, like Plus. immediately it just sucks. I mean, it's totally not going to work immediately because like... No, I mean, but like... And then they can't afford and to And then keep... consistently it's just bad forever. Bankrupts Google. Um, <laughs> like, I'm just scared to like, even think of it. Like, I'm scared to ever purchase anything on here that isn't like a Netflix-style subscription or Game Pass thing. Because I don't want to own anything on this because it'll all turn to dust someday. Yeah. I'm like... I am thrilled to see what they put the price point at for whatever it is i mean it's zero as of now right so i mean like if it's zero and it's you pay per game and again this is all if it works that's game changing because yeah. who would buy a console when you can have zero dollars to get your start sorry i just had a really bad idea what is it being able to uh pay for games with your uh, google play account like, oh. I'm already doing that, buying every character in Citus to <laughs> hit Android mobile. Uh, like, I'm the thing that interests me the most is that they're like, oh, like a thousand player battle royale. Like, look at these water physics happening in real time because they're yeah. cloud computing. I'm like, that's really impressive. But then the sad part for me is that these games will eventually just be lost. And that's we have like an insider there, like stealing the. Stealing the EXE files. I think one thing you have to, and yes, it sucks that there are, there will be games that are lost to time that are quite special. Yeah. But like, think about it now. Technically, no, we haven't lost. I mean, they keep fucking remaking all the old Mario games. Yeah. But like, we haven't lost those. But if you want to play them in their original form, it's really fucking hard to do. So, like, there will be games that are lost. But w if you're honest to yourself, would you have ever gone back and played those? I mean, I, it's important, like, you can go back and play Mario. Yeah. Not, like, on a PC, on a ROM, but, like, yeah. you can, you can launch Paragon, Epic's, like, canceled, like, MOBA. Yeah. Like, you can, like, I remember I almost bought a disc the day they announced they were shutting it down, because I just wanted that disc. The data is still there. The data is out there. Mm -hmm. The data is out there, everybody. But this, the data is nowhere. Well, the data is in the cloud, a.k.a. someone else's computer. Yeah. So unless we have someone going in there and taking the data off the computer, like, it's... That game is gone. Like, no one ever had it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, luckily, I mean, I don't see Sony, until I'm in my 30s, abandoning discs. So yeah. we most of the games that are on Stadia will have a physical format. In on another console. Yeah, of course. I, my worry is just like the first party Google yes. games. Like they're weird. Like uh, that bug multiplayer game. Their, their tech is really cool, dude. Like that a uh, split screen thing where like every split of the screen is its own screen yeah. distance. That's that would be great for like esports. Yeah. Viewing. The like I found the color when they were like throwing all the different colors over that. I don't that. know what use that would be, but so when it turned into Pac-Man, I'm like, holy here's shit. Here's why I thought it was cool. It's like, people looked at Oberdin and was like, yeah. wow, like, that art style is amazing. They did the Oberdin art style in yeah. that thing. And they did it like that. Yeah. The fact that, like, you could take Starry Night and be like, cool art style, and then you can go in and adjust it from there, yeah. I think will make games visually more exciting. Yeah. Remember that FPS, though? The... What was it? Which game? You had the sword... Is swinging it around. You made a comment. You're like, "Oh my god!" Doom. No, it was one that they showed. I'm trying to run through that. It wasn't. It was like first. there's monsters and you had to trade with them. And the the little boy was so stiff. Oh my god, you're right. No, I kind of remember what you mean. Like the games they showed, they didn't look good. Yeah. Oh no, but they also <laughs> were not games <laughs> i don't know the the one game that not that it looked good the movement looked weird but like all that movement looked super weird it was like, still another fuck microsoft moment they're like yeah we did crackdown 3 dude, and it looks really better weird. graphically and we can do the building destruction yeah, better than you can like this was full this this really like it gets me. It gets me really excited for the future. It does. Also very scared for it. Is, yeah, it's it's fifty fifty for me. I'm excited to have another person in the console race or whatever yeah. you want. Not console, but like gaming fight, whatever you yeah. want to call it. And I think it's really interesting and exciting. But also, yeah, what what does this mean 
for gaming. <laughs> it's it's a paradigm shift. It is. It's huge. It's <laughs> really shift. freaking huge. It's really big. All right, you guys have any other thoughts on this? No, I'm good. I mean, I'm, we'll check back in with you listeners in about five years if this still works. They uh that that part where they could said they could do 4K 60 FPS at launch and they can go up to 8K 120. In they the a keyword can will it work? No. On some, I assume it'll work on some connections, but yeah, you know, I don't trust them completely. Neither do I. I mean, there's a reason they didn't release all these megabits per second statistics until the day after. Yeah. Uh, Ubisoft showed up in the crowd as they always do with the launch of a new of a new product like this. I mean, it was cool to have them <laughs> yeah. there. It's, I mean, if they I mean were... they wouldn't have got into this. I mean, Ubisoft if they know it wouldn't somewhat function. All the all the big third parties are gonna be there. I don't know. They're big on the Wii U. <laughs> They're, are, aren't they still big? Isn't Just Dance still coming out on the Wii U? <laughs> I think Just Dance uh, 2018 was the last was the game last one on the Wii U? To, no, to come on the Wii. Oh, on the Wii! <laughs> yeah, but they're no, still... no, they stopped putting them on the Wii U, but they kept coming out on the Wii. <laughs> I just don't get it. No one bought the Wii U! Yeah. You I wanted, did buy the I Wii wanted U. the Wii U. And I'm lending you mine, because I don't want it. The funny thing about the Wii U is by the time you realized there was enough games to want... You knew you shouldn't get it. You knew it was a poor decision. Yeah. At this point, I want it just to have it in like my collection. In your hands. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Say I made it. Like a lot I of the, most of those games are coming to Switch. At this We've point. gotten almost at, the only one I want still is Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario 3D World and like the Wonderful 101, and that's kind of it. Yeah, I can pass on Wonderful 101, but I, I mean I can't do. But yeah, Pikmin 3. Miyamoto talked about Pikmin 4 like three years ago. It'll come Where out. is it? They haven't talked about it. He's it's, just like, oh yeah, I'm working. Like he was in an interview. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm working on stuff like uh, the next Mario game, Pikmin 4. And she's like, what? It'll be there. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be there. So we, we moving on? Uh, yeah, let's, mo- let's moving move out on. of the stadium to a new one. Uh, to other game. Baba is you. Me and Maddie have played this one. I made Jake play a little bit of it before. I really like this game. I have a lot of feelings about it. Yeah? All let's good. hear it. All good. All, let's hear it, Maddie. Actually, not that many. Well, okay. Just good. Let's hear it. Um, it's really cute. Yeah. It's pretty simple, but it's, I mean, it's a puzzle game, so it kind of gets you. It's kind of hard. What are your thoughts, Jake? The what, what is this game? <laughs> you play as this little guy, I would assume, named Baba. Yeah. Baba can transform into, right now, all I know is walls and flags. Yeah. And by doing that, you have to move words that are in like block form together to form like it's it's really cool it's cool ideas but i was not very good at it so like here's an example like baba is you every level starts off with you as baba i played a level recently where i started off as like nene or whatever nene is you yeah so if you push the block baba is you if you push any of those blocks uh the game ends because you are nothing and that chain is broken and you control nothing uh, but if you were to make it so rock is you, Baba would still be there, but every rock in the level would be you. It, I really enjoy it. Like, there's one where it's like a bunch of lava, and then I made Baba is lava. <laughs> and then I was like a billion Babas. Like this. <laughs> That's insane. I do like how, um, of course, you can undo really quick. You can hit X to go back a space. But the music stops if you're not Baba, and it's kind of ominous. Really? <laughs> yes. The, mu- the music just stops. How, how much is Baba Is You? Uh, $15. It is on PC and Switch. How long do you think it is? Uh, it seems very long. Like, not super long, but I'm only on like, World 2. Like five, six hours? I've played three hours, and I'm only on, like, World 2. Oh. And okay, there's, like okay. a, there's, like, a type of, like, collectible I've never even seen yet. And then at the bottom of the, like, it's a world map, like, kind of like Super Mario World. But, like, you go into, like, spaces, like, nodes of, like, 12 levels. Yeah. Uh, on the bottom of the world map, I don't know if you noticed this, Maddie. Uh... <laughs> On the bottom of the world map, there's blocks that say Baba is you, flag is win. And I can only assume they're going to do some like real fucked up stuff with that. Like near the end of the game, like maybe I control the world map. <laughs> world map is you. I don't know. That'd be cool. It's very good. Uh, everyone should go check it out. Uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break uh, and we'll be back after this. Hey, everyone. We're back. Uh, Jake just had experienced wise guys pizza for the first time their stuffed crust uh, no their stuffed pizza d 
deep dish. Jake, what did you think? Uh, I would say it was probably hard, hard eights off nine. Yeah. I was a big fan. I'm a big fan of deep dish pizza. So, I mean, you hand it to me if it's warm and it tastes like utter crap, I'm going to enjoy it. So, it's yeah. pretty, pretty good. I'm a yeah. fan. On a scale of one to ten, how hefty was she? <laughs> On a scale of two C's to ten C's, she was 13. <laughs> it's a heavy pizza, folks. Uh, I enjoy it. You were hesitant, but we all, we're all happy here. Yeah, hesitant not due, not due to the pizza, but due to the calorie intake. <laughs> <laughs> it's social eating. It doesn't count. We've been over uh, this. That's thing. what I've heard. That's true. <laughs> okay, now we're going to get into Us, uh, the Jordan Peele uh, film. One of you can go first because I'm ready. I want to bounce off of. Are we your starting opinions. off spoiler free? Let's just give everyone give their like spoiler free takes. Okay. Movie good. Movie good. Um, hard neutral, leaning towards negative. Uh, very very hard positive, leaning towards very positive. <laughs> okay, uh, folks, you heard it here fo- first. Uh, the two people on this podcast that matter <laughs> like them. Should we, should we give, uh, should I give more than that for less, because I can talk more with no spoilers. Like no spoilers? Like yeah. no, like, ooh, there's... I'm, no, I'm getting, this is a very general thing. Let's go, Jake. Let's go. Um, I think the performances are all really good. I think they're all pretty good. I think the score and the use of music is phenomenal. Yeah. I think Jordan Peele continues to show that he is ambitious and willing to do something different which I will always respect over someone who repeats something that someone else has already done. Yeah. I think there is, I think cinematography, cinematography wise, there are some really cool things, some really cool shots I was a fan of. And those mm-hmm. are my short positive takes. Negatives, plot, little, little shaky. Yeah. That's all. That's my no, no, no spoilers take. Tim Heidecker's in this movie. I thought I didn't know that going. <laughs> uh, Ryan's face did light up when his name <laughs> popped up in the beginning credits. Uh, I agree with everything that you just said, but my heart, uh, I think it's kind of why it becomes a neutral. Like, there's good, but I feel like just the the cons are, it, it doesn't feel put together. It's one second, it's scary. Like, uh, I was I was scared at first, and then they're cracking jokes. Yeah. And it threw me out completely. It felt like there were four different endings in the movie. Yeah, okay. And I didn't like the pacing. I did not like the pacing. Um, I just... Uh, I have a lot of feelings about it. Now let's crack open those feelings. Are we cracking with spoilers too? Spoilers now. Okay. Uh, Ooh, I'm ready. Been? What did you guys think of that, like... Oh, I don't want to immediately jump into that. <laughs> there, there was a big twist at the end. I don't want to jump into that only because I want to establish everything that comes before it. Because I want to talk to her about what she was saying. So you, are you saying basically the issue, the, the plot and pacing issues outweighed all of the everything else to you to weigh it more towards the negative side? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'll say things I disagree with. I semi-disagree with the pacing i was surprised at how quickly we reached the oh we're going into slasher horror film now like they go it's the beach sequence oh there's there's there was a puppy outside um dog detected and everyone knows dogs are lovely um so they go to the beach scene they have the intro um they're giving her kind of backstory um lapita nuong's backstory her character and then they go from beach and then they're at the house and i was like oh wait because I watched, you didn't watch the trailer, but in the trailer he wears the, or what college is it? Dang it. He has a college sweatshirt on. Okay. And I recalled it from the trailer. I was like, oh, we're already jumping into this. Because yeah. one thing that may, is a huge contrast from Get Out is Get Out takes a long time. It is a slow burn to get to what the film is. And technically that's not the case for us. You get to the horror aspect of the film a lot quicker. I, I do agree with that. Like, I feel like, it feels like there's parts in the movie. Yeah, I definitely agree. Act one is very quick. Yeah, but then it's, uh, we can do spoilers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, just to go right in. Um, I mean. Can I say something about the first part, though? Yeah. I liked uh, when she, the flashback sequence on the beach, uh, you really felt how far she was wandering. Uh, it kind of just, like, really. Yeah. 
they really laid out like where she was going how like she wasn't that far away well they did know? that like i didn't even think about it that way but they did a great job of she's not that far but they they made you feel the fear that like the mom felt yeah i like obviously like she really was oh my gosh a shit, hot minute kid, walk away but you felt yeah. like she was worlds away when you're yeah. so young the world is so much bigger yeah yeah um you're, you're very vulnerable yeah but um so I think my biggest issue happens when the uh what are they called? shadows or the the duplicates. Tethers. duplicates they're the in tethers. the house. What house? Um their house. The yeah. first house? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like that it, it goes steady mm-hmm. and then things kind of start to go down because I'm like, how far are we into this movie? Like, this is so quick. What's coming after this? Because I feel like the resolve is coming pretty quick. And then, like, okay, so the dad, like, kills his, right? The yeah. The girl takes off running. The boy's in the closet. The mother's, you know, in handcuffs. Yeah. And then it, it gets to the point where, okay, well, I guess my uh, problem really isn't with the house. It's everything after they kind of get away. Like, yeah. when they go to the... To the, Sam Heidecker's house? Yeah, and it's like, okay, then they have a kill count. They're making jokes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, and then they're all over, like, the city. Oh, my God. And I, it's like, I can go deep on that, but we'll like, get what there. what is going on? It's like, I felt like it was a zombie movie out of nowhere. Yeah. Okay. So, I will agree with... I think that's my one issue with the pacing was the first act is too short. I think the second act is too long so that like I agree the jump from they get immediately scary and then they try to tone like they try to also then bring in the humor because get out works very well because it's mostly humor mixed with a little bit of horror until the end where they cut the humor and it's all horror but or the humor it's a very like it's very distinctly separate and this he tries to integrate it and I disagree it works for me mostly because I I think every good horror movie not ever. You don't need this to be a good horror movie. You can be completely scary. But a lot of them that gives it the fun element is the is the laughs and the. Some people do react that way in that situation is they don't know how to handle themselves and they make jokes. But I can definitely see your issue with that. It's very jarring. One thing I noticed is the mother is the superhero. Yeah. So they go from running to oh. There's one out there. Don't worry. I got my uh, thing from the fireplace, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to go and take care of it. Like, yeah. girl, you... What? That was that was a very quick change. She went from horrified to what was happening to, I need to fucking save my kids and murder whoever I need yeah, to. Yeah, but also, yeah. like, like weirdly attached them, to you know? the fake kids. Yeah, the I mean, kids okay, were real. but that's the thing. I don't know. We now... Okay... I don't want to get into that yet because that's 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 saying so. So <laughs> much. Um, like for okay. What what did you like about the movie, Brian? Uh, I like dislike all of it. I especially liked. I really appreciate it when stuff like this and Danganronpa V three they go like full like. This is like so like impossibly weird. Like yeah, the the twist at the end of this movie is that. These, so basically, it's just, it starts off like just four clones of uh, the, the the main family. The main family. Then it's the four clones of Tim Heidecker's family, and then they look on the news, and everyone has a clone, and they're all coming from the they're mole people, yeah. and they're killing the everyone. The sewers. In LA. They make that clear in the beginning. Then, well, yeah, but then it's the subway. <laughs> okay, listen, it's all weird metaphor. Like that, they someone should have found that weird subway by now doesn't matter but the the whole invasion they're doing the arms out stretched across america thing i'm like this is this is all this is awesome okay yeah when i was watching like this isn't you you made a point you said and then they just turn into zombies that to me is what made this film work so well is that he he managed to make a diff like a brand new type of horror villain yeah but it really wasn't it was basically zombies but to me making it just humans worked in a weird way for me i don't know like i feel like okay so after the house part i was no longer scared i was just watching it it was just and and to me that's fine 
like if you and I yes maybe some people want to be scared throughout but it is near impossible unless you wait to reveal your scary figure until the end of the movie to keep a film scary throughout yeah, like yeah. you can scare me for the first 30 minutes if you can keep me engaged for the rest that's all I care about yeah. keep me like on the edge of my chair in terms of tension I don't need to be jumping it's not that I want to be scared you know for the rest of the movie it's just it feels like it goes from being so dark to light like that how do I even I mean so they're so scared and powerless yeah. right and then they're just I killed more people than you yeah and right. it just kind of took me out it just yeah. took me out like there's one part though yeah I really like it it's when uh they're trying to go back to their home and the car's on fire mm -hmm. that was a really well like done yeah. scene but then the little boy gets out of the car yeah you know after she's like doing the thing with her hand on yeah remember where she's like come here or give it to me or whatever right yeah and he what does he do? Puts his arms out? Yeah. He poses, it's like, so. okay, so <laughs> shadow mode activate because they don't mimic them all the time. Well, that kid he, mimicked them all Yeah, the time. that's what I was going to say. I think it's, it's just, just the kid. kid. It's, just, it's just, just like a weird, like... It's just the way... So here's what I'm... Here's how I... I think now we need to jump in the spoiler because I can't explain my We've reasons. Been spoiling the I mean, the, the final the spoiler. the subway thing where they're all like the carnival. Yeah. They're all mimicking them, but then they never do that again except for the little kids. So we, I think that was just like built into their programming. And I think the kid is just weird. Like, these are weird people. And they then they're like, oh, manner. yeah, the so, yeah, U.S. government. Let, like, let me, let me, okay, so, okay, <laughs> now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in the end so I can explain why I think it works to a degree. So, yes, the end is revealed that basically the government had made... Uh, it's really hard to get into logistics behind anything. Just like in Get Out, how did they... How did putting a brain in someone else's head actually make them function? Obviously, it doesn't work. It's, it's a fucking movie. You just go with it. The government is making clones, basically, of everyone, and they are tethered to their original selves. Like, what was it? Like, you can, you can replicate clonify. the body, but not the soul. Yes. Yeah. The soul is shared. So... Then so it is revealed at the end of the movie that Lupita Nyong's character. Um, this is a big spoiler, so for some reason, if you're still listening to spoilers, I you like care. literally yeah. have no idea. This spoiler, <laughs> it, the spoiler doesn't matter. So Lupita Nyong's character is from the start has been the clone. It did nothing for me. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it was just like okay, you know? cool. I now, thought about it. So then the reason that this explains to me the other things is when you. When you are, this is me getting into the deep lore of something that doesn't really matter. Yeah. When you are born in this clone, you are in the, where we saw the, like, they're replicating every, almost every single move these people are making. But as Lu, so Lupita Nuong's character gets into the real world, so then she is taught by the real world people how to act. Yeah. So that's why she's normal. And that's why young Lupita Nuong, real one, turns into weird because she's grown up around all these people. This is how she taught. This is how she's raised. You are affected by the people around you. That's why she is that way, which is why then the kid, the kid who follows the move, just like the car thing. Fire kid? The re yeah, fire kid. The reason fire kid acts that way is because he's young. He yeah. has not had a chance to... Lupita Nuong kind of had this uprising, to call it, and taught these people, like, maybe you don't need to mimic every act. This is how you yeah. need to act. But that kid is presumably 10 years old and yeah. does not know how to do that so therefore he's still stuck in the old ways about, that is me oh, sorry what about the girl yeah or even the dad he copies them a bit yeah i mean like they all have that like built into them or whatever like the twist that she was a replicant the whole time i i was afraid going into this into this movie that it would end like oh shit like is it did the is that actually a bad guy? Like is that replicate a bad guy? And they kind of did that, but not really. I'm glad they didn't leave it ambiguous because like she, that would have been dumb. Because like she's still herself. This change is pretty much nothing. Like yeah. Did like, y'all notice the grunting? Yeah. She made the same noises that the replicas made. Yeah, like yeah, well, she did that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I. So I was so confused at first. So when they she kills. Her, what we think is the is the tethered person, but yeah. it's actually the real one. And then she like does the grimace and the noises, and then she meet like she does it for a little bit more, and then she sees her son and she's fine. And I was like, wait, I was like, are they just not going to address that? And luckily they did, because I was yeah. gonna be I was gonna be real pissed off and confused. And when the son came out of the locker, 
and he was scared and hesitant, yeah. like he didn't put his hand up to put yeah. his fingers in her eye. That made me realize more, especially after she just got done doing what she was doing yeah. and what he was, I'm assuming, was seeing. Yeah. He, I think, and then he stared at her in the car. That made me realize, like, yeah. okay, he knows. Yeah. There's a there's so much to unpack with this movie, which is why, like, that's why I appreciate it so much, is it's so... He is Jordan Peele is so ambitious in what he's doing. Okay. Not all of it works, but I will respect the chance to try this out and try to pull it together than anyone who does a simple horror story. Again, why I give it a hard neutral? Not bad, not amazing, but I would recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't, I don't want to forget to talk about this. The scene have either of you seen the movie Annihilation? Mm, don't think so. Okay. No. So it's phenomenal. My favorite movie from last year. Um, but there is this end. The end of Annihilation is absolutely gorgeous. And the scene between, and this goes, her performance is phenomenal, between the two Lapita Nuangs, uh-huh. um, the like dance fight scene with the I Got Five on Him remix in the background is yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah. Like the way they, the music cuts between the dances and then there, it's like, it's not really a fight scene, but it kind of is. To, like that was phenomenal to yeah. me. I loved every second of that. I don't know if you guys did, but that was like I liked it. that was movie, yeah. movie nerd me just digging every second oh, of that. There were a lot of very pretty scenes. The escalator, which she's like going down, I thought that was really pretty, really cool. Yeah. The fire, the fire scene with the car was yeah. gorgeous. And I just realized something. What? When they said that, and I again, I like her raspy voice. Mm. Why did she have it? Yeah, don't know. Well, again, that goes to, the, like, the they didn't know how to speak. So I'm presuming she was... Oh, this reminds me of kind of, like, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Like, yeah. one monkey learned. And the rest kind of knew what was going on, kind of yeah. didn't. And she eventually somehow learned how to speak. And she's their leader. And that's why she's, like, kind of knows how to put together words. Well, they well, said like, that she was different. I mean, she is different because yeah. she's from... The, she's real. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, why does she have the raspy voice? She knew how to talk. But it, again, I like it. Yeah. You know, whatever, yeah. but... I Hard realized, to understand sometimes. I realized what she meant by because I thought it was cheesy at first. Like, oh, I, I'm their leader. I'm yeah. different. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, because she's up from the. Yeah. From yeah. The okay. Question that I don't know if either of you guys thought about. Obviously, Get Out dealt with a lot, and that's one thing I appreciate about this movie. Get Out deals with themes of racism very head on. Mm-hmm. It's very obvious. This movie's themes are much more subtle. To say the least, did you? What did you guys pull from it, themes wise? Because I have some takes, but I want to hear what you guys had to say first. I don't know. I I got a few different ideas, but I didn't know how to put them together. I got it like um maybe there are people who I don't know. It started with the tunnel tunnel thing, and then just the people who have done the real work mm-hmm. are the ones that have been. Forgotten, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. And yeah. I thought maybe racial, yeah, uh, issues could be tied into it, the, but I couldn't really yeah. piece. Much. The, and that's I. That's I read in most people's biggest complaint is that he. And again, he has really big ideas, both in terms of plot and of themes. And I think yeah. he struggles to tie it exactly how he wants it. And like the two things I got from it from the twist was basically like depending on this situation you were born in and grew up in it affects who you are as a person yeah. and like that that can affect who you become in the life you live and the other thing i got of it i read a little about this is the like basically our there is like a, a stark divide between our country right now yeah. and that like the only solution that people see is violence and like that's kind of the message that they're giving and i i get that message that scene but it's not again it's very not on the nose that you have to read about it or infer it yourself for me it was probably like a class thing like these people are divided on the circumstances of their birth like uh the bad i'm just gonna call them moms that's fine uh, <laughs> the, the bad mom the bad mom <laughs> uh this one's for the moms uh <laughs> the bad mom uh had like no toys to eat rabbit she couldn't get a c-section uh which was a thing i found interesting oh, yeah. uh and then yeah like uh and also uh i found it interesting that we were kind of 
made to feel like at the end a uh, good mom was bad because she stole the birthright mm. of bad mom <laughs> but that was simply that felt like a metaphor for like a stepping out of your bounds as like mm-hmm. where you're born in uh but i i i'm team good mom all the time i would you guys care? Wait, good mom as in good mom as in the one with kid A or good fire, B? Good mom fire is... poker mom. Got fire, it. Fire <laughs> poker mom. So like kid B. Fighter A, fire yeah. poker mom versus uh, scissors mom. Yeah. So uh, would you guys care? Care about what? Because I feel like the final twist with mom being from the underground, it doesn't matter because her whole life is real. It yeah, it doesn't <laughs> actually matter, but I think it did add a. I enjoy a twist, yeah. even if it doesn't work. I think it it worked fifty percent. Didn't work yeah. fully because, I mean, again, once you start thinking about things, it just kind of crumbles. But I I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> when you brought up class, it made more sense to me. Yeah, because like, uh, Scissor's mom didn't have the things that. That a, fire poker mom had, even though they are fundamentally they're the same person, but it's purely the circumstances of their birth and the events around yeah. it that there, separate them. There is a thing um, in real life yeah. where sometimes if you come from a certain type of you know family, yeah. like maybe very poor, uh-huh. and you gain money, sometimes your family looks at you with disdain because you live a better life than them yeah. and they look they feel like you're looking down on them yeah um and so when you talk about class it kind of made me think about that like okay so she came from the underground right yeah and then she went to the surface and you know taking the good mom you know out of bounds kids whatever yeah i mean i'm not saying it's that but it it just reminded yeah. me, yeah. you know. One thing I really liked and that I, I forgot to mention earlier is I appreciated, this is from the trailers, it did some things that I did not expect. One, like they jumped into the the uh, the, the main plot really quickly. Um, and I also appreciated that I didn't expect it to this to be a worldly conflict. <laughs> I thought it was literally going to be the family, like the, the tethered family, yeah. and it was them versus each other. And that was it. Because they were like, people were saying like, oh, they can only kill their tethered person or like, yeah. but then the fact that they get in the news and it's like this all around thing, I was like, okay, yeah. that was unexpected. I like that. For me, it was like, man, this is some real, because it was 14 minutes for the cops to get there. I'm like, man, this is some real Dragon Ball Z shit. They're stretching this 15 minutes. Oh yeah, I was like, minutes. I was, when they didn't show up, I was like, are they legit going to like make me like recheck this and see if it was 14 minutes and they never showed up. And then luckily, like they, thank God they addressed that because yeah. that would have been... That, uh, no, I, that was, I mean, I, I should have probably finished my sentence yeah. and applied. Thank God they knew that because it would have been it would have been very frustrating. Yeah. Can we just talk about how the end of it all, the sewer rat people, they just wanted to support a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> Arms outstretched across Arms America. Outstretched and you know across what? America. They just stood there. They did not turn around. They didn't I mean, do they did murder all those people. They murdered <laughs> everyone yeah, but they, hear, they hear like an ambulance driving off. They don't care. They did their thing. They're soaking in the sun. Do you guys think they go across the ocean or? Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, they definitely drown themselves. Well, they're just no, no. Actually, Marina Trench. No, that would be the end because it was across America, not across the globe. That's true. So, and the West true, Coast true. goes. I don't know where it goes. It's I not did here. Like seeing some of them like just their heads poking out of the water though. Yeah, they were kind of in the water. Dedication. Yeah. Uh, did anyone think that during the news broadcast? When it's like, oh, they're forming a line. Yeah. And, and it, I thought the guy that walked towards the cameraman looked like Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know it wasn't? <laughs> That's funny. His replicant. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, it was very blurry image. Uh, but yeah, what were you going to say? <laughs> oh, I was going to, it was more of like a last thoughts, like, I I agree with the I liked how the comedies introduced the horror, but I think this works really well as a horror film in that I like the I don't want to, they're not character designs, but like, I like the way the characters walked. I like the sounds they made. I liked 
the I like like the ones were doing the gymnastics and she was putting the lipstick on her and I liked I liked all the elements of that the fact you were saying like they were forced to eat rabbits and they were only rabbits they were like (laughs) stuck in these rooms going in circles and there was in terms of like horror elements that appealed to me I I really liked the lipstick scene yeah I I really 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 liked that one she do you know who she is Elizabeth Moss she's in Handmaid's Tale and she's phenomenal in that I was upset no, yeah, sorry, where you wondering where she was from? Yeah, I was like, she looks yeah. so familiar. I love her. Yeah, I was, I was upset that her and Tim Heidecker. I found it funny. I wonder if they were like, you just do what you want for your person, because Tim Heidecker <laughs> was definitely the weirdest. Yeah, tethered. He, he was like making weird faces, and I don't know how to describe it. He but it did funny. like the reach down, like offering a hand, yeah. and like, going back <laughs> to his hair. I'm like, why is he doing that? And you know what? For a couple that was killed, yeah. I mean. I mean, we didn't get to see too much of them. I, I felt like you got to see a bit yeah. of them in yeah. their death. You know, like, he's a dick. <laughs> she's a dick. Their relationship is bad. <laughs> but, but he's dead on the floor, and she crossed to him as she yeah. yeah. And I was like, man, I didn't they're like, dead. That sucked. Yeah. Uh, I liked when the girls came out of the room. Just because we're in our rooms doesn't mean we're sleeping. Yeah. Go back not, okay. <laughs> not not that this necessarily makes sense, because I but I appreciated the and you, like you didn't like this joke, but like the kills joke that they all just became ruthless badasses. Yeah. Because it made it made the it made me like when they kill someone because like normally I was expecting the I'm killing my brother and or friend and or yeah. like. It should have been like this horrifying moment, and I'm glad they didn't care about that because that would have added a whole. That would have needed a lot more time to focus on, in my opinion. Because okay. like her killing her kids, that like I feel like to deal with her anxiety, like results that come from that would take way too much time. So I'm glad they just ditched I mean, it. They and didn't try. Kind of did it. Like she didn't like it when uh, the boy walked into the fire or the girl was her teeth going through her nose or something. I don't know. Like, the girl, when she got hit by the car, looked really messed up. But she got out of the car not to kill the girl. She went to, like, go, like, look at her, kind of. And then she didn't like it when a fire boy walked into the fire. You know what I was hoping for what? the whole time when they were in the house, the two kids? Yeah. Um, I was hoping that the girl with, man, that thing is sturdy. Let me <laughs> just say that. The uh, putt-putt golf. Oh, dear. oh. That thing does not break. But I mean, she's... <laughs> Like, you know, laying it on that one girl. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping that she was going to be like, my brother's not weird. But uh, no, never got any of that. <laughs> yeah. And he just took it. He just he was looking at it like, okay. I was hoping for a bit more impact on his Yeah, character. I mean, like, this is kind of... He didn't of... look scared until the end. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played Hitman 2016 or Hitman. Of course. Uh, but this game really reminded me of that. Yeah, pick uh, up, pick of, up anything. Lot, and pick up anything. A lot of scissors. Of uh, you just go up and sh- and then they fall to the ground dead. Scissors uh, is a cool weapon of choice. Yeah, not for enough them coins and rubber ducks. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I one thing I did like about the my my dad was like, "Hey, you guys want to see this when you come home for spring break?" And I was like, "Well, I'm seeing tonight, but I'll see it again with you." And through the first like 30 minutes, when I was definitely spooked, I was like, "I don't want to sit through this again." Yeah. But then the twist made me think like, "Oh, I think I actually do want to see this again and see now how it all plays out." I knowing f- that in mind, I feel like in retrospect, the uh, twist at the end with her like stealing the identity of with. Mom A and B swapping. I think that twist makes a lot more impact in retrospect because now thinking about it, maybe the reason she didn't like seeing those two kids die is because they were technically yeah twins? yeah they no uh, they, weren't they weren't hers but like she was linked to them in the back no they would have been hers the kid in the fire would have been hers no because she would have been above, fake ones she, yeah no the fake ones were not hers because she was above ground the entire time. Oh, that is so the true. ones she gave birth to are the real ones. Yeah, that's when it kind of got a little messy for me. I'm this, like, wait a second. Yeah, it takes too much time to like yeah. really think. If you, once you start thinking about it, you have to like write down the like logistics of it all, and it's just too much. Yeah, I'm gonna get a clearance from Aviva in about six months for the uh, <laughs> for the um, us rewatch. Yeah, podcast. I found um, one thing I did like was shoot. Now it's oh, so that it better to me explains why she was so scared to go back 
Because yeah. I get, like, oh, you see yourself in a mirror and you're turned around. Like, yeah. that would be pretty fucking creepy. Yeah. But if that happened once, does that give you PTSD for the rest of your life? But well, it makes sense that you don't want to go back to where your horrible life was. That's something I was just thinking about because, okay, so she has repressed memories. Yeah. Because she does not remember them uh, okay. truly until the end. Do, yeah. Is that, does she not remember them or does she so just, or we as a viewer now, she doesn't repressed, see them? Repressed memories. Is a, is a way of your brain protecting you. Yeah. So basically, your brain hides them. And it's not until a certain event uh, or situation that your brain is like, okay, I'm willing to show you this once more. And you're like, oh, hey, I forgot about that. Yeah. So it's like, was she raised? And did she feel bad about what she did? Or it's like, why was it repressed? Why did she have PTSD? Like, I, I mean, well, you see yourself, and that's probably freaking. You know, but she was from the underground. Yeah, she went and handcuffed that little girl to a bed, yeah. and walked out. So why I, did she? Have I PTSD? think it has to do with the like, no, like no, like I, what I was trying to explain of like that you don't have a prior learning. Like she was still kind of forming who she was. Yeah, she gave and morals. I mean, they said like she didn't talk. She, she wouldn't talk to them about what happened. So I'm assuming she was, like, silent about most things for, like, a year. And then she yeah, slowly she started. Yeah. So then she slowly started to figure things out. I just mean, like, did she gain morals and realize yeah. it was yeah. bad? And her brain was like, okay, shut it down. Yeah. yeah. I but, think yeah. That's a lot of pro- Okay, another thing in retrospect. Uh, she knew pretty much just exactly where to go. Yeah. Like, when she was chasing after her son. She really just knew her way through that place, like oh. down into the other ground. Like she knew it was there. That makes sense. Yeah, and that's, so that's I mean, thing. yeah. Um, also, the this links back to the scene I really like the dancing or like the dancing fight scene is that I think it's cool that when she like started her like I want to have this rebellion was when the dance connected her back. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. I liked when uh, they arrived and the guy was being loaded into the ambulance. He was stabbed. Yeah, and then. When they're at the beach, you see the guy with his, you know, arms yeah, spread out, yeah. and he's dripping blood. And then he shows up again later when she's back at the beach, and it was just his duplicate. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, hey there. That's a nice, yeah. Yeah. Touch. And then he had eleven, eleven, like, yeah. Cro- like he was tired of holding the sign. <laughs> yeah, the replicant had eleven, eleven. <laughs> I'm gonna story. look up that Bible verse after this because I did. They say it in the movie. It was yeah. Isaiah eleven, eleven. Jeremiah eleven, eleven. Je- oh, Something but like, also the clock was eleven eleven, I, and I forgot about the sign, so I'm like, "Oh, make a wish." Oh, that makes the clock <laughs> thing make so much like more sense. Maybe end of the world or yeah. something like that. We could do it right now. Let's do that. <laughs> Look it up. Um, while you're looking it up, I have because I'm. I bet we're close on time. Yeah. Um, I am thrilled to see where Jordan Peele goes from here. I think he's going to be done with the horror genre. In my opinion, maybe not. He's doing Twilight Zone. Like, yeah. It I seems mean, to be the only thing he's doing. It is into. so funny how Get Out is pitched as like, it's like a Black Mirror episode on steroids. And now he's producing Twilight Zone, which is what spawned Black Mirror. And I would say this is very close to a Black Mirror episode as well, which is the like slow burn what's happening. We choose, because uh, this is why I think his movies are going to change. Like you choose a genre. He's chosen horror twice. It's intermixed with a little bit of like comedy, and and then you get this big end twist. That's See, sad. Yeah. Um. Again, like I said, neutral. But I hope he keeps making things because yeah. I, I love horror. I love horror. It's my favorite genre. But I am tired of going on Netflix and watching, uh, you know, horror movies rated two stars because they don't put yeah. enough money into it anymore, and that's what we get. And I don't know if it's because, you know, you can say we're desensitized or whatever. The movies were scarier back then. Sure. I don't want him to go. I gave it a hard neutral, but it's better than what is out yeah. there. A lot. I, whatever. Okay, I got the Bible verse. What is it? Uh, I'm reading this in an article that's like, oh, what is this? Okay. You've seen us. I'm not reading the article, so I'm, that's we're going to read this and we're going to be like, oh, I don't get it. Jordan Peele uh, saved us. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. So, yeah, I don't know. Go read the article I got that from. Uh, or the Bible, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you do it every I, I just, I just read that. You, know, you kind of got everything you read need the, from the Bible. Read the Bible. Maybe you won't be stabbed by your sewer rat. 
when? I don't know. They're coming from the sewers. I guess. The All more right. we talk about the movie, the more I like it, honestly. Yeah. How do you feel after this? Do you feel better or worse? Mm. Or about the same? Same is an option. It, neutral, but I I see the positives more. Yeah. So, it's good. I would recommend it. All right. Uh, it's going to be a show. Um, find me at Brian of the Woods on Twitter. On oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get up. Pit my stuff now. I know. I just don't know how you find me on Twitter at jmosh underscore seventeen. J M O S H underscore seventeen. I'll probably be tweeting a review of us. It'll be short, but it, there you go. One hundred forty characters. Wait, are they at two eighty now? Yeah, they're two eighty. Okay, Maddie. And don't find me on Twitter. I don't want to give it out, but hey, it was really good to you know put that phone down. Okay, yeah, you're right. You don't want to be doxxed. What about your Instagram? Don't want to give that away either. Okay. I'm an enigma. Madison is an amazing artist. Love you, B. Love you, too.